Hi. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to play with errors in Go. If you come from a background of Java, JavaScript, or C++, you might be familiar with this try, catch, throw pattern, but there's no such thing in Go. In Go, we return errors directly and explicitly. It might look like this. It makes possible by two language features in Golang. One is that you can return multiple values from a function. And the convention is that you put the error as the last value here. And the other language feature is tuple assignment so that you can get both the result and the potential error in one line. And then you just check if the error is not empty, then do something about it. What is an error? An error is just a simple interface with just one method called error, and it returns just a string. So that interface is defined in the runtime, so you don't have to import anything to use it. How to create an error? The simplest way is to use the errors package, errors.new, or you can use format.rf with whatever format verb you want. Like here, we use the percentage s for a placeholder for string. The errors returned by those two methods share the same underlying data structure, which is just a struct with one string field. That is defined in the package errors. Or you can define your own error type. It doesn't matter it is int or strut as the underlying data structure. All you need to do is to implement the error methods. How to catch or match an error? You can use either errors.is or errors.as. The use cases for those two are different. Errors.is will check the provided error looking to its error chain if to see if it can find the target. For example, you have the predefined error called error full, and you set it to the second parameter. For the, for the first parameter, you just use the provided error. Errors.s works like just like the catch in the try catch pattern. So what it does, it also looks into the error chain of this error and to see if there's anything that matches the type of the target. If there's a match, then assign the found error to this target. So this target has to be a pointer. So a cache in Java looks like this if you want to cache an error of a specific type. For a similar case, you can do this in Go. So the code here is like, I define my custom error, my error, and uh, this function return my error wrapped in another error. And the code here, errors.s, extract my error from the wrapped error. So that looks a lot like cache, right? I just mentioned error chain, but what is it? That concept is implemented in errors.unwrap. The code looks like this. As you can see, it just tries to see if the provided error implement the unwrap method. If it does, call it to return the internal error. So for example, if E1 has an unwrap method and return E2, E2 also has the unwrap method return E3, while E3 doesn't have the unwrap method. So the whole error chain is just those two errors. If you call errors.is or errors.s on E1, it will look through all those three. How to wrap an error to create a chain? The easiest way is to call format .raf. Know that you have to use the percentage %w verb as a placeholder for the internal error. 
Oh, you can also create your own error type, but implement the unwrap method. The next thing we will go through the history of the error package. Prior to Go1, there's no errors package. Error is defined in OS. But the problem with it is there are a lot of unnecessary dependency on OS. So after Go1, they introduced the errors package with just one API, errors.new. And the uh, unwrap is and as were added into Go in Go 113. And there is going to be one new API coming in Go 120, join. What it does is merge multiple errors into one. All right, that's all I want to talk about error handling in Go. Hopefully you like this video. Please subscribe to this channel if you want to look into more Go standard libraries with me in future. The rest of the video is a demo of everything I just talked about. But you know, if you understand everything I just talked about, feel free to skip it. Okay, a couple of things we're going to demonstrate. One is how to create an error in Go. Second one is how to define a custom error. And the last one is how should we use the errors.is and errors.as, those two methods API. So first, let's import some packages. One is errors, the other one is format. And uh, let's define some custom error types for us. The first one is error full, let's call it Let's make a struct with two fields. One is a string, the other one is a boolean. And to make it comply to the error interface, we need to define the error method. Return a string. Let's just print both two fields. So that's the first custom error we're going to create. And the second one, we're going to make a wrapper error. It's going to take one description string and the other one is an internal error. Same as for error, we need to add the error method first. Let's just bring both the description and the internal error. Then the second method we're going to add for this wrapper error is pretty important because that's what the error packages looks for when they are trying to find the error chain. So this called a wrap. It should return an error. It's pretty simple. We just return the internal error. Okay, we got the two custom error types ready, and the next one is to define some predefined errors. Um, to make an error full, let's just uh, create a full error with the string and the plain, and the other one is error bar. So when you want to create an error, just the easiest way is just to Called errors on new. Yep, those two are the predefined errors. Now let's move on to the main function. What we're going to do is to define a slice of errors here and uh, go through the errors and uh, first print. Errors and then we're going to define two methods. One is called try is, the other one is called try as, and we're going to define those two methods later. And uh, 
Move on to the error slice. The first one is the full error full, and the second one is another full error with a different string and uh, plain. So one, let's make it error bar. The next one, let's create another error with like no wrap because we put verb percentage s here we can still provide the error here but um, with this percentage s it's not going to create a wrapped error to make a wrapped error we could use another verb that verb is percentage w and uh, let's pass the error foo to it as well. So for the last one, let's create our wrapper error. Test is custom error, custom wrapper. And uh, let's pass a new foo error to it. Okay, then we got the arrow slice ready as well. Move on to the two functions. For try is, we're going to switch the case. Case one called errors.is. First parameter is the error itself, and the second one is the one we want to match against. So in this case, it's error full. If we got it, just print the message found exact error full in the chain. Let's do the same thing for bar. For default case, just print that no exact match. All right, that's the try s. Regarding try s, Still need a switch, but in a case we're going to call the as method. The first parameter is still the error itself, but for the second one we need a pointer here. But what kind of pointer? We need to define a variable first. Let's call it full, and in this case we have to make it a pointer to the full error. The reason for this is because the error method is defined on the pointer instead of the value. So we have here a pointer receiver instead of a value receiver. So for the same reason, we need to define the variable full as the point of full error. And here for the second parameter of s, you need to pass the address of full to it. If we're going to catch it, let's say that, okay, we caught the full error and let's print the content of this full. And if we get something else, just print that, okay, unknown error type. Say so that's it. It should be ready to to give it a run. Uh, this looks good, but let's just print a line breaker here to make it more recognizable. Yep, that's it. So let's go through it one by one. So for the Airful, we have here, we got the exact errorful and we got the error type as well, which is true, right? And for the second one, full error, a new full error. So yeah, there's no exact match, but we got the error type. For the third one, error bar, we got the exact match, but uh, the type is unknown. 
So next one, the format RF with percentage S. Um, we got there's no exam match and we don't know their type. Would it mean that it creates an error, but uh, there's there's no relation to the internal error for here because we used the uh, percentage S here. So move on to the next one. So if it's printed by the percentage W, we got here. Okay, we found the full error because it's inside the new error here. And uh, we also get exact error for. And for the last one, we see here the customer wrapper. There's no exact match because we'll create a new error here, but we got the error type. Okay, saying that's it. That's all I want to demonstrate in this video. Thank you.